Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, we're going to work on an industrial building and our focus is on callouts and details. Uh, so we're going to start uh, from step two, model 150 concrete slab on grade floor. Where does it go? We should see it in section. The floor goes from inside of the foundation wall to the inside of the foundation wall. So, I'm going to go to level 1. We need to see what's below this level. So, in the properties of the view, underlay, I'm going to go with seeing uh, underside footing. That should be good. This is a foundation wall. I'm going to go with a floor and I'm going to go with a rectangle. Going from inside to inside of the foundation wall is going to be from here to here. Do not attach the wall, no, because it's going to mess up with the section. If I go with WT, uh, this is how you see the floor. Uh, step 3, we're going to model the warehouse perimeter wall using 279 generic wall. So, uh, see here, the outside of the wall is flushed with the outside of the foundation wall and it goes from level 1 uh, to roof plane. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Let's see it on plan. So it goes from grid D to A, uh, grid 1 to 3, and grid A to D uh, on the south side. So this part is the concrete wall. The rest is a storefront system you see in 3D too. So we're going to use 279 generic wall going from level 1 to roof plane. So I'm going to go to level 1 here and I'm going to go with wall 279 and I might change this to finish face exterior let's say. I'm going to go to the intersection of grid D and 3 which is here. So let's check the settings finish face exterior level 1 goes all the way to a roof plane. A line is selected, so I'm going to go with the exterior edge here and I'm going to keep going on the three sides of the perimeter walls till I get back to the intersection of grid D and grid number one, which is going to be like this and you see it on 3D. And next step, we're going to create view section 2 on the second sheet and a call out. Section 2 is this one. You see it cuts uh, grid 3 and 2 and it's between grid B and C. If I see it here, so going from grid 3 to 2. So I'm going to go with view section uh, between grid B and C and I'm going to go from uh, 3 to 2. So somewhere around here this is going to be the section. Uh, I'm going to name this section which goes here as section 2 so it matches with the PDF file. Uh, let's change the level of details to fine because we need to see our structure elements. See the section scale is 1 to 50. We can take care of it right away. If you don't see 150, go to custom. It's going to be 1 to 150. Uh, and this is our crop region. And after you adjust the crop region, you can hide the crop region. Next step is the rest of step 4, which is detail section, detail 3. So we're going to work on this callout, which is view number 3, which is the very corner of this roof. So uh, let's create a callout, and then the callout is going to be 1 to 10. So. I'm going to go to section 2, view, callout, uh, rectangular. This is where the callout is. I can move it by clicking here. I can move this here. I can go to the view. 1 to 10. In the callouts, we almost always want it to be fine level of details. And I'm going to name this 
section detail 3 just to match with the hard copy here. Step 4 is done. Step 5, insert the provided AutoCAD detail as per section detail 3. So we already have a nice AutoCAD detail. We're going to move it to here. Dimensions to grid as reference. So it's going to look like this. Uh, I'm going to go to this view, insert, uh, import CAD. I'm going to go with uh, this detail. Only on this view, we don't want to see the detail all over, just current view. Auto detect should be good. I might change this to manual origin. Preserve, maybe I'll go with black and white. This should be all a good setting. Open. And I'm just going to click somewhere here and uh, we will adjust it uh, after that. So it seems that it automatically takes the AutoCAD file to background. So click on it and move it to the foreground layer. Now we need to match it with the wall. How? Uh, it seems that the edge of it is matched here. First, I'm going to move this a little bit up so I see it better. That corner and that corner is basically going to be adjusted with this corner. I'm going to use a line AL. First, I will go with the sloped one. A line, click on the reference, then click on the line you want to move. Click on the reference, which is the outside here. Click on the line that you want to match with it. After I move the second one, the first one moved slightly. So I want to adjust the first one again, AL this line and this line. So now it seems that both ends are on the right location. Uh, feel free to adjust the crop, crop region as you wish. So maybe we're going to keep this text. In that case, I'll go till about here. Uh, feel free to hide the crop region itself. We can also limit the grid and level here. It's not going to affect the other view because it's a callout and it says 2D, not 3D. So this is all we want. Make sure to save your file. Step 6, model roof based on this detail. Use generic 282, provide 350 for west overhang, 200 on east overhang. I'm going to first draw two reference planes for the overhangs. So I'm going to go to level 1. Usually the overhang is from the exterior wall, the outside of the exterior wall. So on the west side is going to be 350 millimeters. So in level 1, I'm going to hit RP for reference plane. I want to pick one line, which is the exterior edge of the wall by 350 millimeters. So like this. And now if I click here, it's going to be 350 millimeters away. I'm just going to quickly check. Yes, uh, our units are on meters. So I'm going to extend this a little bit. This is basically our west overhang, if you want to name your reference plane. On the east side, it's going to finish on, the roof is going to finish on uh, grid D, you see it here, and the overhang is 200. So uh, from grid D, I'm going to go with RP, pick line 200, uh, click on grid D, and this one here, this is going to be the east side overhang. Okay, so that's going to be where the roof is. As you see in the image, I believe it's a good idea to go with a uh, roof by extrusion. It's going to be 282 millimeters roof. So on the architecture menu, I want to go with set. Uh, we can pick a work plane. You can also go with the name. I want to pick the east overhang. Hit OK. And I'm going to go to maybe my detail view. 
okay I don't want to crop the view here now then now the reference plane is selected it's going to start the roof right from the reference plane and I'm going to go with roof by extrusion and the roof plane offset zero that's good we're going to pick some lines if you check here, I just hit escape. If I get a dimension using DI from here to here is 282. That's the roof. So that's why it's 282. So for the extrusion, how about I just pick the, uh, the line at, uh, at the top. I want to click on it, move it. Make sure that it's exactly aligned. The slope did not change all the way till there and I want to mirror this line based on this grid and I want to trim this end and the other end it goes all the way till there and it goes all the way till there so it should be good I'm gonna click here the roof is exactly where it's supposed to be so we kind of use our AutoCAD detail to uh, come up with the roof angle. After you draw the roof, uh, you can go with crop view again. We don't need to see the whole view on level one or maybe on my roof plane. I want to select the roof. You see the east side of it is exactly on the overhang. The left side should also move to the west overhang and you can lock it. Uh, let's take care of the next steps. Uh, you see that there is a little bit of uh, fascia here. I'm going to take care of that. And uh, the thick line here shows the roof. So I'm going to go back, click on the roof. It seems that we are missing the horizontal part here. So I'm going to go back to edit profile. This part becomes horizontal. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line uh, till it stops at the exterior edge. Remember that we should have it on both sides. So I'm going to click on this little horizontal sketch line and I'm going to mirror it. So we have it on both ends. Okay, that seems good. I want to close this. Now, uh, if I type TL for thick line, you see that we have uh, the same border in the roof as it's there. Now I'm going to draw uh, the, a profile here. So I'm going to go with my Revit file and the cat file side by side so I can read the dimensions on the callout view which is here. Okay, uh, now let's say I want to go with architecture, maybe I can go with component model in place. Uh, I can go with either generic or I can select a roof. Let's see if there is a fascia if I type F. No, so I'll just go with the roof. So it's kind of gonna show in the roof properties. So, okay, I'm gonna name it uh, fascia, okay. And I'm gonna go with my lines here. Uh, it's gonna be an extrusion. I'm gonna go with the line here. And uh, I'm gonna start maybe clicking somewhere around here it's 95 I can type 95 or it's gonna show 95 uh, moving down I'm following the dimensions here uh, we should move by 44 moving inside 18 uh, I'm gonna continue from the other end move down by you see 153 so 153 moving inside by 32 and we're going to finish where it started. So that's uh, what we need. I'm going to finish it here and finish the model. We can go to maybe roof plane. We should be able to see it here. This is what we just draw. Uh, because we did not change the reference plane, it's still going with the east overhang as for the reference plane. Uh, 
uh, I can maximize this window now and we can move it all the way till it hit, hits the west overhang and I can lock it there. We also need to uh, mirror it from grid 2 and it should be exactly in the right location on the other end. Let's take a look at 3D. So this little part here is just what we created. Let's see both ends and it seems that it matches the roof as it should be. So that's it for this video. We'll continue the rest in the following videos. Uh, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe for more videos.